you got to be true to yourself and do like what comes uh, as an instinct, not as a result of seeing someone else do it, you know, and that's, and, and that's kind of like where, where I like to lean towards. Hello and welcome to Where the Living Room Used to Be, a podcast about Rhode Island's music scene. Hey everyone, it's James. My guest for this episode is Spaka Sama who is an incredible rapper, artist, gallery owner, show producer, and so much more. Um, In our interview, we get into all this, including his thoughts on mixtape culture, what he puts into his live shows, uh, the concept behind No Robots, and an announcement of where he's taking the project next. Um, Thanks so much for taking the time to check this out. I will also be putting out some bonus episodes over the next couple of weeks uh, with Spaka, so make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening right now. And as always, uh, please follow my pages on Facebook and Instagram uh, using the handle at LivingRoomUTB to see some show flyers, pictures, and more from uh, Spaka's time in music. I grew up in... uh... Providence, then I lived in Newport for a little bit, and then I lived in Providence again. But I I don't know if the Newport really even counts because I was like so young, did a little yeah, bit yeah. of high school there. Okay. It's funny when you like did some high school there, it sounds like prison time or something. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think it was pretty, if you could like summarize it pretty normal, pretty, yeah, average, okay. you know. Um, lived with my dad and my older brother, plus I have some younger siblings. So, mm-hmm. you know, that wasn't really doing much school, home, playing video games. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, pretty simple. What were you into music-wise when you were growing up? Oh, man, music-wise, growing up, I listened to Lil Wayne. Pretty yeah. sure everyone listened to him. Um, yeah. a, lo- a lot of Dipset, particularly um, mm-hmm. Cameron and Joel Santana. Yeah, but yeah. um, I also like a lot of other stuff, like uh, Tracy Chapman. Um, listened to a lot of like funk stuff. I don't even know what it was. I was just listening to it because I like the beat. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was always kind of like. And still am. I don't particularly dive into other individuals' lives. I might just like intake some of the music, not even know who they are, figure that out later. Kind of like just going with the flow. Yeah. Okay. So just if it's like if you like the sound, you'll you'll exactly do it for a little bit. Um, so, yeah. But, to me, it was, it was more of like a vibe thing, more of a sound, and less yeah. about the less about the individual. Okay. Um, and who who was introducing you to this stuff, or how were you finding out about it? Um, so there was um, this place called Borders. I, I keep, I'm pretty sure it's still around, but I used to go there after school, and they had mm-hmm. this thing where you could put on headphones and listen to a couple of tracks oh, okay. of an album. So I would just go there and just, uh, you know, just check out what was through. Yeah, check out whatever had like a cool cover. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. let me check this out and listen to a couple of songs. So I really didn't know who I was listening to, what I was listening to. Just like, ooh, I like that sound. That sounds cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're just picking stuff up through all of that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Uh, and I believe uh, Napster as well, whatever my brother was downloading. I was listening <laughs> to that. <laughs> yeah. You could get a lot of stuff back then, you know? It's like. <laughs> yeah. And, and the industry realized that. And they're like, hey, everyone's getting all this free, mu- free music. No, we need to find a way to monetize it. and now we have SoundCloud, Spotify, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How do those do f- for you now that you bring it up? Like, is, uh, is Spotify uh, beneficial to you as an artist? Um, it's, it's funny. Um, I use Spotify, but for the amount of 
work, time, effort that I put into things to have to get like a million streams for pennies. Yeah. I don't really, I think that's um, kind of like devaluing um, yeah. the artist. So I prefer to sell singles directly from my website and uh, things like Bandcamp and stuff like that. Yeah. Or I do a lot of physical CDs. A lot of people order CDs from my from my website and stuff like that. I yeah. do have my music on Spotify and SoundCloud <clears throat> just so, you know, don't miss the opportunity uh, for new people to engage with the music. Yeah. But primarily, I like to just be direct with people and let them yeah either either buy a digital copy or a physical copy and that's been going really well for me because you know the 100 percent goes to the artists obviously like paypal and all that stuff takes their yeah yeah percent. But, but i rather someone do a pay what you can and give me what they think it's worth instead of um streaming it like 500 it, times yeah, or whatever yeah, you know? like, yeah. yeah i mean they yeah. can stream as much as they want yeah them. yeah but like the, the value that you're gonna get it's like you can listen to this yeah. 500 times or you could just you know give me five bucks or whatever you know yeah. like, and then, and then so. you get to own it and not yeah. everybody yeah. gets to have it you know and i think yeah. there's value in that it's like okay i like this artist i'm gonna pay for it and i have it and yeah. maybe other people don't get to hear that song unless you play it for them you know yeah um so i think it would be dope to see artists kind of go back to that route and, um, you know, not give in too much to what these, what platforms are dictating for you to mm -hmm. do. Because if if artists don't put their music on it, they won't exist, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah. it's our, it's it's up to the artist to choose where things go. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, the audience has a say as well, but if they like something and it's not on a certain platform, you can't do anything about it you know so i think artists kind of need to take that power back mm -hmm. um and because I imagine a young artist that maybe gets like a hundred thousand streams let's say he was able to do that he or she or they were able to do that directly to their consumer without having to <laughs> get a million streams like okay i have ten thousand sales yeah that's that's you know that's real money that you can use for the studio use for equipment yeah yeah you know a lot of guys are um busting their ass and um not making any money but they're spending yeah. money you know to, yeah. to make this stuff it's not free and people always want shit from artists for free but it's like no man i, I paid to do it just yeah. like in any other service or situation so if you want to consume it, you need a. You should want to pay me. If you don't, then maybe I'm not the artist for you. you yeah, know? yeah. Have you ever heard uh, of the band Grubus Malt from Providence? No, I have no. no, not yet. Um, I have now. <laughs> yeah, no, they have a song. You probably dig them. They were uh, Sage Francis's uh, backing band for a while. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So they're like they're in that kind of. But they have a song called "What Ladder," and it yep. is like the perfect. Uh, song about being a musician and it's precisely what you're talking about just like spending a bunch of money getting in a tour van playing a bunch of shows putting out an album and then just have someone at the show be like can i have it for free you know yeah, and they, yeah. like they called <laughs> it like the you're not worth my six bucks foundation you know and it's just like but it's just so on point you know and i, I toured for years yeah. and done hundreds of shows as well and it's just like when i hear that i'm just like oh yeah man this is exactly what it's like you know like they don't know what it's like driving to shows and all of the stuff that goes on besides the hour that you're on stage, you know? Yeah. And depending on your situation, it depends on, you know, how you're funding all this stuff too. A lot of people are paying out of pocket and don't make their money until after the show. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think it's a, a big, um, that would be a big like point for artists to be like, Hey, just buy it directly from me. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. iTunes is, iTunes is pretty good. Um, for that, like, when you're selling singles and stuff like that, you get a majority um, oh, okay. of the profit. So that's not bad. Um, yeah. But like everything else, and I'm not like shitting on Spotify or anything like that. No, I'm no. Saying, yeah. You know. But yeah, I mean, just to kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, so you're listening to a bunch of different music. When did you start performing? Like what What got um, you into, into rap? So performing, I don't know what year it was but i know the first place 
Well, the first place I performed that was this like summer camp. <laughs> so, oh yeah, where was that? That doesn't count. I, <laughs> oh, man, I don't remember. It was called yeah. Any Town, but I, it was like a leadership kind of um, development thing yeah. for like middle school or maybe even younger than that. I was super okay. young. I don't remember, but like, yeah, they had a little talent show, and um, me and one of my friends did that. So that was horrible though, but. <laughs> It, I had a good time, and um, yeah. I'd say my first legit performance, and take that with a grain of salt, was um at Black Rep, like okay. one of their open mics. Um, yeah. Um, and then after that, Jerkies, tons of shows at Jerkies. Awesome. Yeah. And um, what kind of stuff were you doing? Is it uh, similar to, <laughs> to what you're doing now, or was it completely? Like- completely different back then okay. it was just it was just for fun and you know just trying to like very uh bravado and like trying to be cool and stuff like that um yeah but i do appreciate all the type of music that i made back then mm-hmm. um just because it led me to realize what type of music i actually wanted to make mm-hmm. you know as as i matured and everything like that so it was cool to get that out my system early. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. And I think as far as starting to rap, it was based on my older brothers. Both of my brothers were doing music. Um, so, you know, they'd have songs and like I'd listen to their beats while they were writing and I'd write something like on the side, but I would never show it to them or rap it for anybody. And then um one of my older brothers, he's going like a year or two older than me, he started mm-hmm going to the studio so i started going with him and um learned how to like record and stuff like that okay so, yeah, what that, studio was that that's pretty much was, it. was there a um, spot that we were hitting it was a couple of different places just friends that had the like heads. a spot in onlyville um mm-hmm. there was another spot near near the coca-cola factory so oh, okay a couple of different places um yeah you know, some a lot better than others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who was doing your beats back then? Back then, this was like mixtape era. Oh, so okay. We would just get these CDs that were called um, How to Be an MC. And we would uh, just, you know, go through those. It would be yeah. all like the top the top artists, their newest songs, their uh, the beats for their newest songs. Mm-hmm. And we just rap on that. Like, you know, no one had access to beats really they were producers mm-hmm. but didn't know a ton because equipment was really expensive back then to like get an mpc and all that stuff yeah um so it was really it was really just like remixes and freestyles um and i was rapping with a couple different people that I still you know would do music with in uh like till this day yeah and they're really dope artists yeah yeah who's that like, we were rap- uh jesse piff Okay. Um, he's he actually he's the one that we were in the camp together with. That's how oh, I met him. <laughs> well, awesome. Did I meet did I meet him at the camp? Maybe I met him at the camp or a little bit before it or something like that. But we were rapping. I'd stay like at his house for a weekend, and we just have like this. I don't even know what kind of mic it was. It wasn't even a mic. It was just something you like glued to the wall, and uh, we just <laughs> like a contact yeah. mic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we would just like rap. We were making songs. We were like, "Yeah, this is great. This is great." It was. It was probably actually. It was pretty good stuff. Quality wise, it was, it was shit. But um, I think we we knew what we wanted to do, and it, it sounded yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and then the other my other boy, his name's uh Drew Hill, Andrew Hill, um Hills. His rap name was Youngster. He doesn't rap anymore, but I think he's one of the best artists that I know. Um, nice. And we had the same situation. We would we would be at his house and we'd rap in his closet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the booth. Yeah, that was yeah. the sound booth, that, you know? Like that, going was the the... Booth. that was the booth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because we would do that at that time and we didn't have, like, any good equipment. You know, we had, like, acid or whatever, the, the program. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you weren't taking acid and then rapping. It yeah. was, uh... <laughs> um, and we were using that and we just, like, rap. And we, mm-hmm. I don't think we really cared what the sound quality was. It was more about just like getting your voice over the beat and going yeah. that way. 
Yeah. And and that went really well. We had a um we had a little company that we started. Uh it's called Bose well, Two. The names are really funny. One was called Straight Hood, like S T R eight Hood. <laughs> okay. And then the, yeah. and then the other one was uh Fam Entertainment. So uh F A M, so it stood for fully automated movement. Um and that was fun. We did we did a lot of stuff. We mm-hmm. had a lot of mixtapes. I I released a, a mixtape like under that situation and did like thousands of copies. I'm not gonna say exactly how many, but it was more than ten thousand copies. And I would go out to like different wow. plazas and stuff and just hustle them. You know, people would buy them and people would come back and bring friends and buy them. Um that's right. So so it was really cool. There was a lot of support at a time mm-hmm. where there wasn't really a lot of social media. So, you know, it's like, hey, how you doing? My name's Falco. I'm a rapper. Here's my CD. And people would either buy it or be like, nah. <laughs> Most of the time they would buy it. But yeah, during when the times when you could sell the times is like the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that long ago. Yeah. But when mixtapes and stuff, like physical mixtapes were popular and like corner store, bodegas and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like a lot of artists were were making tons of money, you know, like really? I'm pretty sure like Dipset at one point was I'm pretty sure they sold millions of copies, you know. Um like through that because, channel through Yeah, through experience. that through that channel, through different DJs, the DJ industry was I feel a lot bigger. Maybe it still is big, but you don't really hear about them as much because DJs aren't really doing mixtapes because mm-hmm. now you can get in trouble. <laughs> And a lot yeah. of people did get in trouble. Um, but, you know, it, it kind of sucks because a lot of artists made a living that way. Um, mm-hmm. And it kind of it, it got shut down because it also was in that realm of Napster. You know what I'm saying? Like using music that you don't have license to. Yeah. Um, yeah. At least that's the excuse they use um, to like shut that down and then bring in things like SoundCloud and Spotify. Mm-hmm. you had to go through them to get your music out there you know yeah um i think if people were still able to do mixtapes um it would be a lot different it would um i think when people listen to listen to mixtapes they're a lot more critical than you are because you're paying for it you don't really get a mixtape for free you know so you're a lot more critical when you spend your money on something as opposed to hey this artists just randomly popped up on my feed yeah they suck but i got to listen for free so maybe yeah. i'll whatever yeah. um so yeah it's just different situations but i feel like it was really cool to see like a lot of djs come up and be able to put artists on and getting placements on certain mixtapes was you know a really big thing so No Macaulay Culkin sitting on the throne Lane's plotting for the spot that I'm on Let's get it on, message to all My feelings are feeling, feelings are gone now Numb to the pain of the world and physical flaws With no emotions at all, I simply motion them off Them haters talking the cause, won't gossip off with the horse So summer schooling them all, of course, they off course Hate me out in public and love me behind doors In my own lane, through the pain and plenty sorrow Cool for today, tomorrow go full throttle with the pen in one hand, other probably the bottle screaming, fuck the world straight to your face. You know the motto, young leader, but I'm here to encourage you not to follow. Staring back through the mirror, not looking for role models. Future color bright by the minute, off in the distance. Summertime alone in the zone, sprint to the finish. I guess what, you know, some of the music that you're doing now, um, you work with Last Child. Uh, is that pretty much exclusively or um, who else? Um, and, yeah. Well, yeah. right now, uh, him and I have a ton of projects that we're working on. Oh, okay. Um, my main focus is, is, is that, you know, um, yeah. he sends me beats. I put raps on them and, and yeah. do that. And that's been work, working really well. We have a good uh, chemistry. We both trust each other, mm-hmm. um, and there's not much to it besides, hey, I have this beat for you, or hey, send me this type of beat, um, and we get yeah. to work. 
Yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to working with other producers. Like, yeah, sure. Um, people send me beats and stuff like that. I check them out. I have some like backlog that I'll eventually get to. Um, yeah. But right now, the pri- my priority is with the last child. Yeah. How did you connect with him? Shit, I don't even know. I don't remember. I met him. <laughs> I've known him forever. I've known yeah. last child for ages. So. Yeah, I don't even I don't know exactly how he met to be honest, but he was making beats before I was rapping. So yeah, I know he did like a lot of beat battles, and he was at okay um, a lot of maybe as to twenty stuff. But I know for sure he was at the Black Rep, and maybe there was some crossover with whatever yeah. programming um, was happening between both places. But yeah, I think what the the reason part of the reason why i make the type of music i make now is also because of the type of beats that he was giving me i was like Mm -hmm. oh well i can't i can't rap like this on this type of beat so i started developing it helped me develop a style so yeah and then uh vice versa my style helped him uh kind of guide how he would make beats for me as well and we and we developed the sound together so that's why we work so closely yeah yeah no, I really like it. I, I think that it, it's um, it's cool how how together you guys are, and just the you know the the sound is cohesive, and and that it's you yeah. know you know I guess that kind of leads me into my next question of you know you started a project with the progression and um, the green, and um, it's no robots, right? Is the next uh, installment of uh, of that well, project or so. The the idea with the no robots is it's not actually an album. It's just more okay. of a campaign. It's it's more okay. of a campaign, and a campaign is basically the umbrella for everything that's happening. Okay. You know the saying the saying is no robots or being anti robot, um, yeah. or being part of the anti robot club. So it's not necessarily a project. It is a project and scope of everything. You know the merch, the yeah. music whether i'm doing an interview that's all under no robots right yeah okay um but the actual project that's coming out is called actually maybe should i say the name all right yeah i'll say the name it's called um the valley of wires so the idea is it it picks up where the green left off and the Mm -hmm. whole idea behind the green is like i'm standing at a edge of a cliff and i'm looking out into this valley and I'm trying to decide on going forward and, you know, battling um, the enemies or turning around and just returning to regular day-to-day life and not um, getting involved or exposing any of that. So mm-hmm. Valley of Wires is about saying fuck it and jumping down into the valley where okay. all these um, different situations take place and all these robots are and that's where the project is the value of ours pretty much and mm-hmm. then it's, it's kind of like um it's kind of like going levels through like trying to fight a boss you know each each cd is a different stage or each yep. project is a, is a different stage and uh the value of why is going to bring you through three different stages um and then when we get to the end that's going to lead to something else oh, okay yeah so it continues yeah. on from there yeah, like you have a, it, it pretty much continues on. Yep. Everyone always <laughs> says, are you going to always rap about robots? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. As long as they're around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I think it yeah, says like on, it. Uh, on like the, on the progression that is like installment one of three or something like that. So exactly. I mean, yeah. But if it, but if it's going to continue on past that, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, so the way it's going to go is, um, after I do the value of wires, there's going to be a uh, progression uh 002 and then mm-hmm. i'll do another like the green and value of wires are kind of like bridge projects like mm-hmm. in between um so i'll do another progression 002 then i'll do another progression 003 but in between i'll have like other projects such as value of wires maybe i'll do something called no robots you know maybe i'll do another version of the green you know there's always different things but like when it gets to, you know, maybe bigger budget or putting more 
content behind things, the progression projects uh, are the are at the forefront. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm loving what you're doing. I think it's incredible. Um, but can you, I guess, just talk a little bit more about the the concepts behind the robots and what um, what that means to you? Like, what's uh, yeah. All right, so the idea of, you know, all right, you hear me say robots and, you know, machines or technology and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the thing with that is I'm not saying, like, don't indulge in technology or anything like that. What I'm saying is don't let it blind you or fool you into um, leading yourself down a certain route. You know, you have to have a certain amount of control over what you're doing and what you're creating. And when you just plug in and and don't really have any like tangible effort or tangible product or like uh, a feeling that you're going for, it kind mm -hmm. of becomes robotic, you know. And, yeah. and that's what you want to stay away from. You want to always keep this is music, you know. You want to keep your your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions in that because that's where it resonates with people and if people continue to just copy and paste what they see is trending you know <laughs> then that's not really putting effort to it and they're kind of robbing the listener of having that connection that could possibly like help them through their day-to-day -day life or or inspire them to do something if you're just doing something that someone else is doing mm -hmm. you know obviously there's nothing's original you know because we there's been so many things that have been done <laughs> since the beginning of time so <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's all just an evolution of ideas but what i'm saying is like if there, there's different ways to take it but you got to be true to yourself and do like what comes uh as an instinct not as a result of seeing someone else do it you know and that's and, okay. and that's kind of like where where I like to lean toward, you know, mm -hmm. not just not following the trends <laughs> and not and not purposely going against the grain. It's just like, hey, this is what I made. Listen to it or this is what I'm doing. Check it out. Yeah. Um, I'm very into sci fi and very into like riddles and puzzles and stuff like that. <laughs> so okay. it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of just like making a puzzle for listeners to kind of engage in and and maybe it clicks later but oh i get what he was talking about i understand why he did that or mm -hmm. oh shit i gotta figure this out um yeah so, so that's why i do that like i'm big into uh twilight zone and uh like star trek and everything like that <laughs> oh, okay so, yeah rod sterling that's my uh yeah that's probably the only person i i really um so i like how um how in depth and ahead of his time he was with mm -hmm. the material he was putting out, and it always engaged the viewer to think mm -hmm. and uh and come to a conclusion by itself. You know, kind of hearing that it, it makes sense, uh, or you know, made some connections for me of just that what you're doing is thought out and the very um, cinematic um, or yeah. um, you know like chapter story. Game of Thrones, yeah. y kind of thing, where just like, all right, so yeah. here's this thing, like, here's the end point that I'm going to get to, and here's where I'm going to take you. Whether it's a, you know, you're going to drop a video or a, you know some new music or these other things, that it's all part of that story that's being told and that message that you're trying to get out. So, um, exactly. That's, and here's a spoiler too. I actually I'm writing a book that takes the whole concept from beginning to end. So. Wow. Novel, I guess. So that would be, that's going to be a very pivotal thing to release. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this interview, yes, I just told you, I'm releasing a book. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. Awesome. Awesome. Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So the idea behind the whole thing about like no robots means just being yourself. Um, this sounds cliche, but that's the simplest way to say it. Be yourself yeah, yeah. and um, just put your true effort towards your craft. There's going to be people that like it. There will be people that hate it, you know, and that's fine. Um, there's mm -hmm. billions of people in the world. You only need a couple hundred thousand <laughs> to make it if you want to make a living. <laughs> if you want to make a living off of it, you know. 
Um, yeah. And if you're and if you're doing things and you're doing it with quality and with intention, there's mm -hmm. no way you know. And, and you're trying to get better and like having your sound as best as you can have it. There's gonna be people that are gonna listen to you, like no matter what. That's it's you know it's just like uh, it's just inevitable. It's impossible mm -hmm. for you to it's impossible for you to make a good product and market it well and you know not be able to have some people like it yeah um, so i i think a lot of people get scared of that and that's why they follow trends or whatever because they're like oh this is a safe bet this is what people like like no do what you like and if someone likes it they can yeah you know, dive into it as well exactly yeah. yeah and i think that gives people a fresh perspective when you when you take your own approach because like oh this is this is different this is like you know, this is cool, like, and they can't even, it's their first time hearing it or feeling it like that. So it just hits them in a different way. And I think that's important, especially with music, because mm -hmm. people take music very seriously. Like, you know, oh, you don't write your own raps, or I'm not saying that about me, I write all my own stuff. But like, if a rapper doesn't write their own raps, or if they say they do something that they don't, you know, why do yeah. people... Why, you know, people get upset about that. They don't care if an actor's in a movie, you know, and says, like, oh, I have all these guns and all these drugs. That doesn't matter because, yes. you know, they perceive these things in different ways. When you're, when you're an artist and you're speaking directly to a listener, it has to be truthful to yourself or at least truthful in the aspect like you're telling someone else's story, you know, but you can't say, hey, this is my story if it's not true. Yeah. Yeah. And authentic to <laughs> your life experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, you with... can <laughs> not do it. Yeah. But, yeah. but then that just means you, you fall into the category of, of being a robot, you know? Um, yeah. And, and when I say being a robot, it just means, um, you know, what does a machine do? It can only do what you program it to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're all, if you think about like a baby, we're all like sponges, you know, when we're first born and we're soaking in all this information. So essentially you could say, oh, it's, you know, you're being programmed or whatever. So it's kind of like being anti-robot is choosing your program. Like, what do you want um, out of yourself? Yeah. What do you want? What do you want people to get from you? You know, so it's kind of yeah. cre creating your own program and not letting someone else program you. And, and tell you how to maneuver. I don't give no fucks about a robot. Talking about a lot of shit they don't got. Money, cars, and bitches was their only plot. I'm focused on progression and it don't stop. I don't give no fucks about a robot. About a lot of shit they don't got Money causing bitches was their only plot I'm focused on progression and it don't stop A lot of us quit on our dreams A lot of us haven't been seen as kings or queens for a minute it seems A lot of robots in the rise controlling the youth with a marketing scheme A lot of us wanna live life, a lot of us wanna be free A lot of this isn't for you and a lot of this isn't for me A lot of this ain't what it seems the wires and get to the root of the scheme They claim that the root of all evil is green I do not put no trust in these things Nothing will make me believe Everything goes to deceive No one will ever be free No one will ever be me I don't give no fucks about a robot Talking about a lot of shit they don't got Money cause the bitches was their only plot I'm focused on progression and it don't you, you know, you mentioned your your marketing and it's just on point. I mean, you've, you've touched on everything um, from uh, your short videos and, and the, you know, the illustrations that you've done. Are, are you illustrating them yourself? It, or, um, are you um, it, it, it's a, it's a variety of things, you know, like I'm, I have a couple of different artists that I work with. So okay. It really just depends on, on what's happening. Um, yeah. You know, I design a lot of my own stuff as well. So it really just depends. Like, hey, I have this idea. What do you want to put on it? Or, yo, look at this sketch. What do you want to add to it? You know, I gotcha. or sometimes, 
sometimes they'll send me something like oh i just listened to this song look at what i what i thought of you know yeah so it's it, it comes from all angles um but everything has intention behind it you know and every there's a lot of artwork that has that hasn't even been yeah. put out yet just because it's it's sitting there waiting waiting for its opportunity mm -hmm. um but as far as like all that stuff being cohesive is just my way of bringing that world that i'm speaking yeah. about um that we're all battling against that is like artists are overwhelmingly shut down by technology and yeah okay you could be on whatever platform and have a million of whatever like followers or whatever but then once you take that platform away then what do you have you know uh -huh. and i kind of and i kind of think of it that way which is the same reason why i like physical and tangible things because at the end of the day if instagram and all that stuff is gone yeah. i can still i can still connect with people you know because I, I make personal connections mm -hmm. and um and i yeah. and that's high a maneuver um but a lot of people they they just like vanish <laughs> you mm -hmm. wouldn't hear from them again <laughs> and it'd be yeah. tough to start up and i'm pretty sure that happened to people through like myspace or whatever yeah, yeah. um i mean you put your phone number on your shirts right yeah that's my phone number <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I mean, text like, me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't call me, but you can. Don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, I I try to keep all that stuff cohesive just to build on uh the concept of that world mm -hmm. and make it more of a real thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I want I want people to like for it to resonate with people and for them to really be like, yeah, I don't I don't fuck with robots, like yeah, and mean it and and understand what that means and i think mm -hmm. by keeping everything in line um it helps make that more real you know mm -hmm. um everything in this world what i'm sitting on the phone that we're using whatever it was thought up by somebody it was in someone's head first and mm -hmm. then it materialized and i think that's the same same way with art same way with concepts same way with emotions if i if i make music a certain way and you're listening to it it's gonna affect you you know you it could put you in a sad mood it could put you in a happy mood it could put you in a energetic mood um so i think that is very important um mm -hmm. because you know energy is only tra transferred it's not it doesn't disappear if mm -hmm. i if i'm saying something to you you know what i'm saying that that becomes a part of you yeah um, you know you could you consume energy pretty much so you just and that's and that's another thing i think you just got to be conscious of what you're putting out there because if you're putting negative stuff out there um certain things come along with that yeah know? people can sense that and yeah yeah and whether whether it's to you towards yourself or mm -hmm. or just you know maybe something you say might evoke a certain thought in somebody yeah. you know and um you could be harming people without even knowing it so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to have any of that like on my on my conscience or any blood on my hands or anything like that yeah um so just you know like i don't i barely say the n-word in my raps i don't say anything about females you know um just just really conscious of that stuff so. mm -hmm. yeah so I, I try to make music that I can let my mother listen to or my daughter listen to <laughs> with, without without being like, oh, let me step away when this bar comes up. You know, I just want yeah, it to be, yeah. I want it to be something that everyone can hear. Um, it does have a very like intense tone to it, so you would mm -hmm. think I was saying something, you know, but it, that's that's part of the energy. It's yeah, really, yeah. you know, no negativity. Mm -hmm. Except against robots. Yeah, I mean that's all love too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> when, right. when, when when someone's in the wrong, you got to tell them. So yeah. That's all that yeah. is. That's all that is, and that's just helping people reprogram themselves and think a different mm -hmm. way. Think about progression. Think about building themselves, and um, mm -hmm. not not falling a victim to, you know, these things that are put out there. If mm -hmm. you see a famous artist that's out there and acts and does things a certain way they know they're influencing their listeners so you mm -hmm. got to ask yourself why why they're acting that way if they know millions of people are watching and they know it's going to have negative results 
mm-hmm. you know, it mu- there must be a reason behind it. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it can't be, a, and it can't be a good one. It's either by it's financially beneficial to them, or they just, you know, an unhealthy person that wants other people to put themselves in certain situations that's gonna not allow them to progress in life. You know, mm-hmm. so there, there's not there's not much more to it than that. You mm-hmm. have no reason not to say something positive, especially when the spotlight's on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that what one of your quotes? You know, what is life without progression? Is that what that means to you, or can you talk a yeah, little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah, what is life without progression? I actually, it's funny how that came up because last child had sent me a beat. I don't remember. I think it was called Progression or the Progression, and this was like one of the first original beats that I got. Um, so I rapped on that and that was kind of like the beginning stage of how I'm creating my music now. So in the middle of the track, there's like a bridge and I was freestyling. And since the song was called progression, I was just like, what is life without progression? You know, mm-hmm. and then one of my other boys, he came up with like the answer. There is no real answer, but at the shows, everyone always says like, Oh, it ain't shit. Um, so, you know, life without progression ain't shit. Mm-hmm. Um, because we all have to progress. Technology has to progress. People have to progress. Um, yeah. And when I say progress, I don't even necessarily mean in a positive way. Progress can go either way. It could be, it could, it could be forward. You know what I'm saying? Negative things can progress, you know, um, and positive things can progress. So it, it's just about choosing your lane and choosing what you want to go forward, you know, because mm-hmm. Everything's moving. It's not gonna. It's not. Nothing's waiting for you. So mm-hmm. we all just have to make that choice on which lane do you want to be in. Yeah. Um, and 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 that's also just to like prep people or um have them think. You know, if you see that on my hat, you don't read a question without answering it. It's not possible. You know, <laughs> you yeah. read it. You yeah. look at the hat. You read it, or you look at the shirt. Actually, I think I have it on my shirt. Yeah. And, and it and it and it makes you want to respond you know mm-hmm. and like i said i like to be interactive with people from performance to the merch to whatever and i want you even if we don't talk i want you to see the shirt or see it on someone else and just like think to yourself for a second you know mm-hmm. um and i think that's what it's all about you know because that could make somebody's day or put someone in a certain mind state like oh yeah what is life without progression because it sounds positive but it doesn't sound like um but bitches get money like it's not anything like that. <laughs> it's it's like yeah. you know yeah you, you can't you can't it's, avoid there's having some a, motivational tone to it you know exactly like, yep. yeah there's a there's a big motivational tone to it you know if you wake up in the in the morning and you look in the mirror and you ask yourself what is life without progressing like you know what? yeah I'm gonna progress today I'm gonna do something that's yeah. gonna like bring you to the next tier mm-hmm. what is life without progression progression. As I maneuver through the summer, haters hanging by my coattail, I'm reaching for success. If you don't like it, go well. Spock attack with logic, devil sell your soul for retail. Now I'm back on track. Make the opposition derail. Laughing to the bank, I found some money. Get my emails. Gotta pay close attention to the details like females. Uh-huh. Go ahead and try your luck. I do not need I help. Know. You say you the man, but act just like females. These suckers trying to jack my ways. I can't see well. Uh-huh. I'm far too ahead of you, lame. Wish me okay. well. My lady always ride by my side with no seatbelt. Even when the times get tough, I will be Kind of just brought up your your shows, you know, having that call and response, uh, interactivity with your audience. I mean, yeah. um, seem like really well known for the performances that you put on. Um, can you talk about, uh, you know, what your shows are like, how they've even evolved over time, um, what goes <laughs> yeah. on, what people can expect when, you know, we have shows again. Um, what's yeah. that like? 
So one primary thing with my shows is um, whether it's a headline or if I'm like hosting a showcase, I always like to give other artists the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So I build the bill myself. You know, I have a lot of friends that are artists. I meet new artists every single day. So to me, it's all about just giving people the opportunity to also get on stage at a show that's going to be managed well, you know, because sometimes mm-hmm. there's shows you go to and, and it's not put together too well and you have artists have a bad experience. And I think I have a different advantage because I'm an artist myself and I mm-hmm. know what I want out of a show. So I try to help artists get that for themselves as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, it, t- it takes time and um, everyone's still learning, but I think that's a big point of the shows. And just as far as the interactive stuff, it's like, hey, man, you, you paid to be here. You physically brought yourself to this place, mm-hmm. obviously not to have a bad time. You don't go out <laughs> and spend money, spend money to have a bad time. So yeah. like whether your dollar is spent to see me or it's spent to see one of your friends that are also on a bill, I just think it's important to bring energy and just speak to as many people as possible mm-hmm. and um, just create a positive experience. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't think I've ever sat backstage for longer than three minutes, you know? And if I do that, it's to like stretch real quick. <laughs> I like to, I'm in a crowd yeah. watching everyone perform. I'm in a crowd shaking hands and people probably like, who the fuck is this guy that just shook my hand? But then when I go on stage, they're like, oh, okay, now I get it. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's it's all it's all it's all to elevate um mm-hmm. each other, you know what I'm saying? Um and just awesome. like the standard of of what you expect to see when you go to a show. Mm-hmm. You know, I have I countless times I've had people come to my show and be, and, uh, be like, oh man, this is better than that so and so national act that I just went to go see uh yeah. you know venue x whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah yeah and paid um, four times as much or whatever you know like. yeah and it's like wow this this show was better i enjoyed myself thoroughly <laughs> like 10 times more yeah and yeah. then i've also had i've also had uh tons of situations probably every single time if i'm on a bill with you know a different touring act um and then artists come up to me after like how come you're not the headliner? Like, damn, you can't, you <laughs> yeah. didn't know me. You might not have known me before this moment. You came to see this guy, but yeah, yeah. no, you know, now you're gravitating towards me. So it's yeah. just all about, you know, putting, putting the right energy out there and people, people hold on to that. You know, they yeah. don't, if they feel like you're a person just like them, which, which I am, which we are, yeah. um, then there's no reason to put yourself above people. I don't care if I'm in New York. I don't care if I'm in Philly, Florida, wherever. You know, mm-hmm. if it's the environment that was created to perform in, like, I'm going to hang out with everybody or as many people as possible. And um, we're all going to interact with each other. It's not going to yeah. be, it's not going to be a, are they here? You know, I always hear that. Are they, are they even here? Like, damn, they don't, they don't even think you're going to show up because you're backstage. Um, the, oh, like the other artists. You, yeah. 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 Like if people love you and they came to see you, you like being in a crowd isn't going to take anything away from yeah. you getting on stage and performing. If anything, it's going to enhance it because people are like, wow, he stood next to me. Or, oh, I got to talk yeah. to him or whatever. Yeah. Um, not, not saying that all artists should take that approach. I guess I'm, I might just be more comfortable with it because I'm used to running shows and always like running around and being mm-hmm. busy. And having like that pressure on all the time, so I, I understand if some people need to like, if you need to be backstage and like lay down or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone has their own approach. I'm just saying, me personally, I like to be, you know, in the pit <laughs> with everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like literally, you know, like there's yeah. videos of you, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the pit rapping, and everyone's around you with lights. You know, their cell phone yeah. cameras. I just had to check my teeth because I. I've hit myself in a in the mouth so many times, so many <laughs> times um, from going into the crowd. I was talking uh, to my girl about this earlier, so I definitely got to get like a foam cover for the mouth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I've, you know, kids are crazy, man. Like yeah, they just hop and they hit your around. elbow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. A yeah. Mic, metal tip right into the fucking mouth. Yeah. 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 That's that's one thing I'm excited to get back to. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure you're yeah. antsy to get back to do on that. So, um, one real quick question, like when can people expect um, the next release to come out? The Valley of Wires, is that slated for yeah. this year? Well, it's cool because uh, Valley of Wires, V-O-W, like you vow, yep. you know, I vow to kill the robots. And that should be coming at the end of August, as long as everything works out properly. Nice. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be really short, straight to the point, high energy, um, and tons of content. This time, this time around, we're gonna do a lot of content. Um, mm -hmm. As you see, different cartoons and stuff like that. A lot of cool merch. Um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully cool. end of August, before the end of twenty twenty, you'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, we're waiting, you know. Um, Waiting, waiting's good. Yeah. <laughs> when, when people aren't waiting for you, that's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, when you're like, hey, put this thing out. And they're like, oh, all right. You know? yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. I want um, people to be like, finally. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in that camp. So yeah, I mean, with some of the production stuff, is that uh, Summer 88, is that your production company that you um, do yeah. shows with? And um, Yeah, yeah, that's my production marketing company. And yeah. um, going forward, like I have done stuff with a lot of different artists, whether mm -hmm. they're emerging or they have record deals or whatever the situation. But I'm going to be, that will be more in the forefront towards the end of this year. So I'll be more openly uh, providing like marketing services, designing mm -hmm. services and stuff like that for artists um, just to help everybody. Because I, I see the response when I release stuff and what people see like with my content. So yeah. I want to help help other artists do the same yeah. thing. I'm not saying like, I have, oh shit, I have the greatest whatever. But like, yeah. do, I don't know. Do people with, people yeah. like the artwork and mm -hmm. yeah. So if I can help them get something that's on that level, then, yeah. you know, that's all. Yeah. Do. And in the past you've booked a lot of open mics and, um, open mics, national like, acts, tours. Festivals. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. everything. Pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. And not even just music. I've done combination of music and art shows, um, you know, with vendors and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. live dancers, that always sounds weird for like hip hop dancers or other other <laughs> yeah, type yeah. of cor choreography. Yeah, Chore yeah. Choreograph. Yeah, choreograph. Yeah. <laughs> choreograph. Choreography. Is that I? <laughs> yeah. Chore what? What's that? <laughs> it's like use that. Yeah. I use that word like what once every five years. So. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, the the gallery public. Uh, shop and gallery can you talk about what that is your um your relationship to it and uh you yeah. know, what people can expect there so um public it's owned by myself and my partner Cass inez um and it's basically a shop and gallery in the in the front area it's the art gallery and in the back of the shop but you know we kind of mix things as well and mm -hmm. it's primarily there to give emerging artists and um artists that you know have been doing it for years mm -hmm. an opportunity to showcase their work um to the public um and also opportunities to engage in different events like live performances mm -hmm. uh poetry nights uh comedy nights 
We've had dinners there, you know, tons of things. So mm-hmm. really a way to bring the community together. Um, that's why we created that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how, uh, I know that you've been closed with COVID-19. Is there, you know, anything that people can do to support you? Or, or what are you guys, what have you been up to over we'll, this time? Um, or? Yeah, we've been closed since March. It's, it's almost like we've been, uh, yeah, it's, it, we've been closed since March. Um, but we do have some stuff that we'll be announcing um, very soon. Mm-hmm. Actually, in August, we'll be making okay. a, a couple of different shifts. But um, we'll be announcing it soon. Don't want to say too much about that right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there will be ways to support and ways that you can um, help keep that going and help yeah, okay. um, build it even more. Yeah, okay. So uh, it's the best way to just follow the gallery on Instagram? Or, yeah, public, yeah. not private on Instagram. Follow that, and um, we'll have some updates on there soon. Cool. Yeah, well, last last question. Um, yeah. What would you say is your greatest musical accomplishment? My greatest musical accomplishment? Um, I think one of the biggest accomplishments would be being able to be self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Not having to wait on anyone for anything, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and being able to somehow find people that are great to work with, such as mm-hmm. like Last Child or Boh Studios. You know, what I'm saying that's why I record at, um, and they shoot yeah. a majority of my videos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so. You know, I think that's like a a big accomplishment to have those types of relationships with friends, you know, and be able, and, you know, really good quality. Yeah, Um, create amazing stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you could be an artist and never come come across anyone that can help you, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very lucky. (laughs) Yeah. There's some talent here, you know. (laughs) Yeah. There's tons of talent, you know. And even yeah. beyond the people I work with, there's so many other talented individuals mm-hmm. that I, you know, I, I'm always checking out local music and everyone has really great visuals and really great uh, other content and uh, mm-hmm. great records and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not just them, you know, it's just, it's everything. <laughs> everyone has like a lot of talent and yeah. I think a big spotlight's being put on that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Spaka. I appreciate your time, man. This has been awesome. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. If you think that you can stop me, man, you got another thing coming. Oh, Lord, this crazy world say nothing. Cut the fake shit, keep that real shit coming. If you think that you can stop me, man, you got another thing coming. Oh, Lord, this crazy world say nothing. Cut the fake shit, keep that real shit coming. I've been asking for the summer by my first name. I can spot not to dock, robots cannot relate. They had to readjust the settings, no more time to hesitate. Keep your eyelids open, close blocking to imitate. Had to plan to get here early, very sorry to be late. I was in my own lane, cruising on the interstate. Done, everything correct and got pulled over anyway. Robots digging in my back and they took everything I say. Screaming, make another move, but you won't sing another day. Uh, trigger finger itching with your skin a different shade. We all gotta fight the system for our children on the way. I made the promise, teach my daughter. Every day, every day to be yourself and keep on thinking to yourself. By the way, you should never replicate since everybody else is fake. Only lanes cut and paste, nothing bad that they can say. Try to be another man that ain't in my DNA.